But Alice, did you, did you always, always know that you were going to write the kind of thing you are writing? Oh, I didn't know I was going to write the kind of thing I've written, but I knew that I was going to write. I, I just had to. I remember reading uh, Hans Christian Andersen's The Little Mermaid, and you know about The Little Mermaid and how sadly it ends. And when I came to that sad ending, I was appalled. And I got up and I went out and I, I walked round and round outside the house making up a happy ending for the little mermaid. <laughs> she got the prince. <laughs> and she didn't have to be changed into foam on the sea. And so I think that was the beginning of a writing career. I knew I had to do something about, about what I found in, in, in life around me. I can't, I can't remember when I didn't uh, make up stories. I don't think I, I called it writing. So, in your childhoods, what do you remember reading most vividly? What was your first member? Well, there's The Little Mermaid I told you about. <laughs> but uh, there was also a book that I don't know if people read it anymore or even know about it. But you know, Charles Dickens wrote a history of England for children. And somehow this was lying around our house. I think it had been given to my father when he was a little boy. And I started to read it. And it, I was at the stage where I didn't know about Ireland. I didn't know how you pronounced it. So I came to this place where the headline was, Troubles in Erie Land. <laughs> I, I didn't know anything about Erie Land, but I read it anyway. And it's a wonderful history. I don't know how accurate it is as history, but it has it has lots of beheadings in it. <laughs> and it describes them in detail. How many strokes? Well, you know Anne Boleyn and the sword from France. You know about that. But also, how many strokes it took to separate the head. And here was I, the seven-year-old or eight-year-old girl, just devouring this stuff. And uh, so that, that was the, the great book of my earliest childhood, not, not Peter Rabbit or anything like that. Do you feel wiser at 78 than you did at 28? I think not. I do think that I feel less bothered by things, but mm. that's not that's quite it. what less you're saying. Bothered. Less bothered. One feels otherwise very much the same. Very really. much. And that, that's a big surprise, really, I guess, how how you do stay inside pretty much the same person. I don't even feel that I have advice to offer because of, I've, had, I've had more experience, obviously, than someone. Well, maybe not, because in my generation, you didn't have as much experience. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, you've had three children and brought them up. I mean, that's, that's quite hard quite work. Bit. Yes, <laughs> yes. But still, I would never, ever give advice on bringing up children. And I, I don't think they would urge me to. <laughs> One feels free of certain kinds of embarrassment. When yes. one was young, it's how people look at you. You were so conscious of how you were being seen, whether you were going to look silly. Mm -hmm. And if you thought you were looking silly, it was awful, it was painful. And yes. when you get old, you don't really mind how people see you. You, think, you said, true. you said this morning that one didn't really, <coughs> you said, supposing I were to get drunk and fall down, it wouldn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'd pick myself up and, you know. So in that way, you, yes. you are a lot freer. But I don't know if that amounts to wisdom. <laughs> I mean, 